Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Last week I received a surprise package in the mail and it was a complete surprise. I normally know when things are going to be sent to me by Let's Resin or from other companies because they let me know first. But this was a total surprise and it was a good surprise. It's a set of two silicon moulds. One of them is an ice lolly mould and one of them is what I would call a lollipop mould. And you also get the sticks to go in your resin ice lollies and lollipops. I think Let's Resin must have seen my previous video where I adapted a regular ice lolly mould to do the same thing as what these moulds do. But now they must have took pity on me and thought, Louise, you can do it much easier. We'll send you the moulds and I think that's what happened. So today you're going to be seeing me make something a little bit different with my ice lolly and my lollipop mould. So if that sounds like fun, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Right, the first thing I needed to do was find out how much resin I would need for these moulds. So I filled them with water and then poured the water into a measuring cup. And the capacity of both of these moulds together was 220 millilitres. I had some resin to use up from Let's Resin. And you know what? When I poured part A from this bottle and I'm going to have to speed it up because I had to wait for the very last drips to fall out. I had exactly 110 millilitres which is exactly what I needed. How cool is it when that happens? I think it's amazing. Down to the last drop and it was exactly what I needed. And so yeah, I poured out 110 of part A and 110 of part B. After giving it a really good mix for two minutes, I took my pigment powder, which is the cyan pigment powder from the Let's Resin pigment powder set. I poured it in and gave it a good mix. And then it was simply a case of pouring it into the moulds. When I poured the resin in, I didn't go all the way to the top of the mould. As you can see from the mould, it's got the puddle for the melting lollies as well. So that's part of the mould too. So I've left a little bit of space so that I can give the mould a squeeze from underneath just to help any pockets of trapped air to escape to the top. I always like to do that. It just helps to get a nice smooth finish. And after that, I filled it up to the top and left it secure. I actually left it until the next day because I didn't want it to be bendy when I took it out of the mould. Right, with the wonders of video editing, it is the next day and it's time to take it out of the mould. I'm just loosening it around the edges and I had a bit of a struggle with this one and I'll explain why. I hadn't realised that underneath the one side of it was all kind of joined to the side of the mould. So when I started taking it off and trying to turn it inside out, I realised that this one wasn't going to turn inside out. So it was a bit trickier than I was expecting and I didn't want to damage the mould by trying to turn it inside out. So for this one, I would recommend putting it in soapy water, getting the water to go right down and then just giving it a squeeze and it will pop out. You know, if you squeeze it from the bottom, don't try doing it the way I did it here. <laughs> the other one actually came out very, very easily because the mould wasn't joined underneath at the bottom, if that makes sense. <laughs> right then, so here they are all finished and I think the mica powder looks really nice. I wanted to keep them simple. I could have used glitters and a few different colours, but no, for, for what I'm doing today, I wanted them simply just one colour. And I think it still looks really good just with the one colour. So let's put the sticks in. It's time to get those sticks in. 
I'm using E6000 plus glue and I've put it into the holes rather than putting it on the sticks. I thought that if I put it on the sticks as I put them into the hole, it would make all the glue just come out all over the top of the piece if you get what I mean. So I decided to do it into the hole and then I just put the sticks in and it was as simple, simple as that, just a case of leaving it to dry. So I repeated the whole process and I made one in red and one in purple. And again, I used the Let's Resin pigment powders. Now my plan was to do something completely different with the ice lollies this time and so I decided to get my Let's Resin silicon tray mould and make something to stick the ice lollies to and they're going to be hooks. Um, yeah, I'll explain more about that later but yeah, the idea is to have the ice lollies as hooks. So I've mixed up a little bit of each colour I'll put the amount on the screen because at the moment I can't remember how much I mixed up. I did write it down and I put some at one side of the blue and at the other side I did the purple and then in the middle I did the red. Once the colourful border was cured, it was time to do the next layer. I decided to do an opaque white layer and I have some liquid pigment here. It's from Resin Pro. It's the Colour Fun White Liquid Pigment. And yeah, mixed it into my resin and poured it on. I didn't quite have enough resin, so I did need to add a bit more. But it was as simple as that really, just one layer up to the top and then it was finished and the next day it was ready to demold. So here we are, it's the next day again. And I was quite excited to see how this would turn out, actually. I know it was something very simple, but I was interested to see how the border would look. So let's have a look. And there we have it. It's still a little bit bendy. I don't know whether you can tell, but that's normal. After a day or two, it stiffens up and it's, you know, not bendy at all. Now then, the lollies were going to go at the bottom as my hooks and they were a little bit big. I drew around them with a dry wipe marker because it just wipes off afterwards just so I knew what position I wanted them in and then what I did was I drew around the, on the bit that overlaps to see where I needed to get rid of it because I was going to cut a little bit off. So I took my dry wipe pen again and just drew the lines on the puddles of the lollies to show me where I needed to trim them. I didn't actually film the part where I removed those bits because I had to take it outside and I was being a bit lazy, didn't want to set the camera up. <laughs> but what I used was my Dremel with that grinding tool that you can see in my hand and that got rid of most of it and then I neatened it up with the sanding tool just to make sure it was just the right shape and I kept checking to check that they would all fit together. I forgot to mention that I did clean up the area where I cut it with a little bit of UV resin so that, you know, it was shiny like the rest of it and to try to hide the fact that I'd cut it. Anyway, I've got some E6000 plus glue again. I'm just putting some in the middle. I don't want it all splurging out the edges. I just want it to be held into position because I am going to be adding another layer of clear resin anyway. So yeah, the glue is just to keep them in position when I put the resin in. And then I just did the same thing with the blue one and the purple one. And then I just took a Q-tip just to wipe away any of that brown marker that I'd put on, you know, the dry wipe marker. It just wipes off, like I said before, and I just wanted to make sure that none of it was still visible and I'm wiping it off there. Whilst the glue was drying, I cut out a black vinyl decal on my Cricut and got it all weeded and onto the transfer tape ready to put on. Um, right, okay, so you know I mentioned before that I was going to make it into hooks. At the time I wasn't sure where which room I was going to have it in. <laughs> Now, I think this would be ideal for a child's bedroom to hang small toys on. Nothing too heavy, obviously. These aren't very strong hooks, but they're good for something light. Um, 
but I don't have a child's room in my house. And I thought the only room that this would really go in is my bathroom. And so I had to think of something bathroom related. I knew I was going to hang some sponges on there. And yeah, so I, I ended up going with splish and splash. That's really hard to say. <laughs> splish, splash in the end. Um, I know that lollies aren't really a bathroom thing, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that is what I did. Now, as you might have noticed while I've been waffling, I had a bit of a hard time getting that transfer film off because it kept taking the vinyl off with it. I don't think my vinyl was sticky enough. I think I picked up the first one that I came to and it was quite an old one and I hadn't realised it had been losing its stickiness. But I got there in the end and because I'm covering it with resin, I'm not too worried about it coming off because it won't come off once the resin's on there. And so I mixed up my Let's Resin resin in just the same way as before and just carefully put it into all the gaps. I didn't want to go over the splashes, not the splashes, I've got splish splash on my brain. <laughs> the puddles, I didn't want to go over the puddles from the lollies, I wanted to go around them. Um, so yeah, I was very careful with that. And that's all there was to it really. Although the resin isn't covering the puddles, it is touching the edges. I would say for about three millimetres actually of the edges. So I'm hoping that that resin is strong enough and, you know, there's enough coverage to hold them in place when things are hanging on the hooks. Like I said, there's not going to be anything heavy on there. So I think it'll be fine. So here it is with the final layer fully cured and it's ready to go on the wall. And so that it would go on the wall without drilling through my bathroom tiles, I decided to use extra strong double-sided tape and I think it's called Nano Tape. It is really good. It's thick and strong and I've just put two layers on the back and let's have a look at it on the bathroom wall. I think it looks really fun and cheerful and colourful and I think I just about get away with having it in the bathroom. But like I said, it would be perfect for a child's bedroom. What do you think? Well, it's that time again and we've reached the end of the video. All the links and discount codes will be in the video description. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, please do. And I will see you again next time. Thank you for watching and bye for now.